What's going on YouTube? It is your boy Ray Bands, and I am back with another video. And the question I have for you today is this. How long are you going to trade that baby account? How long are you going to learn for somebody who has never even built an account? You've never witnessed that. Like every video they teach, they have a few thousand dollars in their account. Like anyways, matter of fact, I, you know what? No. No, I'm not being nice. Let, let me before I even get into this video and I give you these tips and I make these recommendations, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. You think I'm playing? All right, you can go back and look at the history of my account. All right. I started in a one bedroom apartment and we've been busy. Watch this. You think this is a joke? Sure, send a pin code to my mobile. You, you you think this is a game? Where's my phone? Hold on. Because I'm for real. Like, I want to help you, but you got to be able to help yourself, man. You clicking on these videos trying to be lazy. You think that you're going to get this fast resort in trading, and that might not necessarily be the case. Let me show you something real quick. Let me help you out. I just want you to look at the, the total account summary. Let me just help you see something really quick. Now, of course, I got to protect my information. So, you know, you're not going to be able to see my account number. Um, <laughs> you're not going to even go see what bank I bank with. Yeah, you might be able to figure it out from the color scheme. But look, look at that. This is who you're learning from. Right. I could open two more accounts and just blow your mind. But I just want you to see my first account. Look, I am a professional. This is what I do. All right. I'm going to give you advice, something that I found in the market. Let me take this off. Something that I found in the market that helps me. I'm going to call this the 100 percent thought process strategy. What does that mean? Strategies lose. Thought processes win. Let's go ahead and get this out the way. It is no such thing as a 100% strategy. It's no such thing as 80% strategy. All strategies vary because the market will always change. It is how fast you can recognize the change, how well you can recognize the tendencies for you to really make profit. Now, I have people in my community who've built their account to 50,000. I've created a couple of multimillionaires and I have hundreds upon hundreds of people supplementing their income. And I actually do have a few people who lose money. Now, I could, you know, say, man, look, they, they be over leveraging. They do what they do. And, and it's on them, which it is even with the success it's on them, too. But I take responsibility for all of that. The information that I'm getting ready to share with you. I want to give you this because it's going to put the odds in your favor. OK, now, if you want to go deeper into this information, you want to lock in. Of course, I have a site that I'll show you before this uh, video is over and you can tap in. But I just want to show you something that's oh so simple. Oh, so simple. I'm not even going to take a whole video trying to teach it because you don't even like to watch the whole video. So I'm just going to do what the YouTube educator or the YouTube learner likes. Right. They like them 30 second videos. that's going to teach them how to make a million dollars. I'm about to give you the biggest gym ever the biggest gym ever average just think about average for a second okay when you're looking at regular candles uh candlesticks these are hakanashi look at the candles right these are not average candles these are price candles so these are going to paint exactly what price is doing so the goal when you're watching candles like this is like okay i'm trying to see the average well, how can you decide if the average is going down or if the average is going up? I'm just going to get a line really quick so you can follow me on the screen. Let's make this yellow. Let's make this three so we can see it. I want to show you something. Notice how when the average is going up, you can tell because of where the closes are happening. Ray, what do you mean by close? Because these candlesticks paint price, the close, right? You see how it started here, but it closed here. Well, actually, you could say it closed here because we have a wick here. We always have to assume that the, the shortest point or the direction that's opposite from the candle, right? So if this candle was going up, but the, it's a wick that's going into the candle, we just have to assume that that's where the close was, 
right? So even though you see this right here on a price candle, which means it closed right here, when it opened on the next one, it opened here. That's just something that you can't see, right? If we go to a lower time frame, we would actually be able to see why that happens. So when we're looking at these price candles and they're building, look, boom, you see how it, it looks like it's going up. And even though you have a red candle right here, you like, well, the average is up. That's easy. What happens when you get in areas like this, when it when it doesn't make sense? Even this can be a little tricky. You have to see where, where the closes are happening. Okay, I have my average. I have a strong average down here. So because this move happened before the next green candle came, right? I'm looking at these three here. Before this green candle right here showed and closed, I have to assume, right, that this is one move. So that is for sellers. Now I'm waiting for, will price get back here and beat this high? Notice when the next red candle comes up, it's below this high. Notice the next red candle, it's below this high. What you're looking for is enough data to say, hey, it is safe for me to enter the market. Now, when you see the candle come back right here and it rejects off this area, that is how you confirm where you want to put your lines, right? That's how you confirm, okay, this is a great area to look for structure below or to look for structure to get back to and to confirm and actually move nicely. That's the two thought processes. Once you identify through this process, that's the two pro thought processes that's going to be in your head. Now, notice how when price gets down here, you see how it gets super choppy. But then after this choppy area, you get that nice move where you can catch you a quick trade. You see how this is doing the same thing that this is doing, but it's doing it over a longer period of time and more distance between the pivot points that is bouncing off of pivot points being the two directions here, right? The two areas where we see price, this is the two most important prices uh, where we are getting the reaction that we want where we can catch trades. Now, this and this is the same. If I go, I'm on the one minute. So with this area right here, if I drop down to the five second, it would actually look like this, which means if I with this, if I go to a higher time frame, it will look like this. You might want to rewind that because that's a gem. Let me help you one more time. Areas that look like this on a higher time frame, which means if if you're on the five second chart and you see an area like this, there's no way you can reference this so you can think about it better. If you find an area that looks like this and you go to a lower time frame, it's going to look more spread out, more understandable like this. But if you see it like this on a lower time frame and you go to a higher time frame, it's going to look like this. Now, you might be saying, man, that's some BS. No problem. <laughs> I'm going to help you see it, all right? We're just going to put this box over this, and I'm going to show you how powerful those Hakanashi candles are, all right? You can sit up here and play if you want to. It's, it's You know, some people on YouTube that be trying to steal what I teach anyways, but it's okay. I ain't going to say no names. Look at this. Mm, we are. I want to show you how this can look on a lower time frame, so let's just go to the five second. It shouldn't take too long, uh, too long to find this yellow box. Come on, five seconds. I got somewhere to be now. There we go. I want to take forever. I know pocket options is usually faster than that. This is a little annoying. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. So here goes that yellow box. Now remember, it was all crunched up on a higher time frame. You see how it looks now? You see how that makes more sense? Look at that. Now watch this. If I go back to that one minute and go find that same box, and remember I said this area right here, if we go to a higher time frame, it'll look like this. Watch. And some people will call this a, a price trap area, which this is price trap. So if I go to, let's say, a 15 minute, I want to show you what that looks like. Too exaggerate. You see, it does look like that, but let's go to a five minute, too high. Okay. See that area? Look at that. Beautiful. Even if I put that back to where it was, right? I, I know because I'm looking at the closes. So you see the wicks? Let me go to a two minute. Do you see what I mean? It's going to look like that. 
because you understand that when you're looking for an average, even if it's with not Hakanashi candles, let the overall move help you. So if you see a move, a candle like this on a higher time frame, the only way that candle makes sense is if you go to a lower time frame to see where the closes are happening. Right. OK, if I got three red candles and one green candle, it's for sellers. So now I know because this move right here, because this happened before this green candle happened, I know that this is the important spot. So I'm either looking for structure below or I'm looking for price to get back there and not beat this area to confirm that this is not an overall start of a trend for a higher time frame. That's all you're looking for in trading. You're trying to find the safest place to put your trades. When you enter your trades in the high frequency market, you don't affect the market at all. It's like an options play. You don't you don't affect the market at all. You're literally trying to find the best spots to place your trades to collect your profits. And, and what you're asking yourself is, what is the best place for me to put my trades where other traders, buyer or seller, is going to be interested in entering? So when you're looking at an area like this, okay, we know that the top of this box, sellers are interested. We know that the bottom of this box, buyers are interested. However, when we're looking from the standpoint of what's happening on the average right here, we know that before this price trap happened, we actually had a nice sale. Sellers are in control. So how can we make that make sense? When we go to the higher time frame. We look, we already know what this line means on the lower time frame. So if we're looking at this, we have our pivot zones. Okay, that's a zone. That's a zone. Look, this is all I do all day long, and I kill them. Boom. I know my target area. I can see, all right, this is going sideways. I just need to see it break and then retest. Now, you won't be able to see that here. You'll only really see that on the lower time frame. So when I go back and I look at it, you see how it breaks out, right? So it comes outside of our box, and, and I would use this as a main line, even though this is here. But it breaks outside our box, this lower level, and then we get structure right below that, so in this area. Now, when you're watching these candles, even though these are one-minute candles, it's pretty hard to judge. Like, hmm, how many candles should I stay in the market for? Like, when should I enter? It can be tricky because you can be right, but you enter in an area, right? So you enter right here. This is a one-minute chart. So let's say you take a three-minute trade. And you just happen to be in an area where it wants to make a little more structure before it makes that move, which that's when you're entering. You'll lose the trade and then you'll see a candle that comes back to your entry. Now you're infuriated and you're mad. So to avoid that off of the years of study that I put into this, I've been trading for three years and I would say I really got it at about a year and a half. I, I was just on the charts one day and I was like, hmm, level line. And that changed everything for me. If you don't know what a level line is, I've had videos on it in the past. I have a whole site that talks about it. Um, I have my own type of entry techniques, how I like to look at the market. Cool thing about trading is you can study it and find things that you like to see too. But I'm going to switch to Hakanashi. And I want you to see something really quick. Let's go ahead and make this a little more accurate. Because sometimes pocket options does like, they, it likes to move your box or your lines. So you see how, one, it's little small telltale signs that you could have caught this breakout. When you see movements like this happen and it gets here and you usually get like orders that are pushed the market away, like right here, you see how price got close and it pushed away and stalled, closed, pushed away and stalled, closed, then made the move. That's how you know it's still relevant. But when you start to see it push away, but then it doesn't go to where it likes to go, it's also a term called a midline, but I'm not even going to get into that, right? Pushes away, retest under, boom. In this little bitty area right here, you can see that trade. Now, if you're in my community and you're watching this video because you've really been rocking with me and you're getting results and you know the strategy and you can look at this chart just like me, you already know this is a snipe in our community. We, we love to see stuff like this. I actually had a member that coined this. He calls this the three candle stall. <laughs> and he, he is right. So when you see structure that supports that and you get that three candle stall, Hakanashi candles, Boom, you can catch you a nice trade, especially when that target zone, this green line that I placed, is enough uh, distance away. That's all we're looking for. A good distance away for the pivot zone so it's not too many people interested in the area. You get a confirm off of a case that you've built, you'll catch good trades, great trades. Will all your trades be wins? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, if you average 
anywhere between 55 to like 63%, you can actually make some decent money trading, right? I only average about 59%. And I've pulled hundreds of thousands of dollars off brokers, right? I've lost money on brokers too. I even have a video on my channel where I talk about a big loss I took from a mistake that I made. And people talked about me, you know, scammer, gambler, whatever. But I'm rich and they're not. <laughs> so it, it, it is what it is, man. I, I'm just, I'm not trying to be ignorant and I'm not trying to be arrogant. But at some point, you're going to have to ask yourself, man, am I am I really do I understand what I'm doing? Do I even have a team put in place when I do start winning to understand how I'm do my taxes? Do I even have things put in place to understand how I could take this money and go get real assets? Right. Trading is not meant to take you out of a situation that you put yourself in because you have poor budgeting or because you're lazy. Trading is a way to accelerate goals that you have. So if you have a job, be responsible with that job and run a budget. Take a percentage of your budget, allocate it towards trading and trade accordingly. If you stay the course long enough, your trading can get strong enough to where it can provide the option for you to be a full time trader. It can provide the option for you to be able to make, you know, good amounts of money and be able to go buy your homes and real estate portfolios and start businesses that you've always wanted to start it or go places you wanted to go because you've built it to that point. Most people don't make money at this and they lose at this. Why? Because they don't have discipline. They're probably learning from somebody that doesn't even care if they win or lose. They just want you to sign up. Hey, man, get on the trading account. OK, it, it is affiliate accounts associated with pocket options and any other broker that you can find out there. So what? That's business. That person doesn't care about you winning or losing. They just like, hey, man, sign up the affiliate. I got this course you can buy, which is total BS, right? I ain't putting no profits out the market. But guess what? You like the way I teach and you like me. So buy my course. That's what you're doing to yourself. So coming from somebody who's actually made money in the markets, coming from somebody who has traded live and knows that other people on YouTube, especially for this broker, they don't trade live. You even have some people who will try to teach you over a pre-recorded video. Like, come on, guys. If you bumping up against this channel, if you just bumped into this channel, if you're finding this channel, you know other people that trade, share it with them. I'm telling you right now, this thought process will change your life. Here goes the big tip that I want to give you. All right. When you build a case for the market. What I mean by build a case, when you're finding your structures in the market, when you understand the tendencies of the market, I would really write these words down. When you understand the tendencies of a market and you're building a case, it is something called a level line break that will help you a lot. A level line break is when the average actually changes. What do you mean? Let me show you something. I'm going to go get a moving average. I'm even going to make the moving average exponential. And I'm going to change it to a moving average that's pretty quick and reliable, which is 14. All right. That is a great moving average to trade with. Now, I have a strategy called the surge strategy. I actually had a it was a course at the time. The course was 45 bucks. And it talked about how you can use this moving average with the Hakanashi candles to be able to find profits. I'm not going to go into that course. I'm not going to break down every single setup that you can find and how you could think about this. I just want to show you something really quick with this moving average. Matter of fact, let's let's make it. Let me go here. Um, and I want to make it to where we can see it a little bit better. So we're just going to make it four, uh, three and Let's do red and pink. Yeah, pink. So look at this. When we're looking at this moving average, do you know how hard it is if these candles weren't on the screen to know when this moving moving average is going to go up, when it's going to go down, when it's going to cross? It's telltale signs that you can use to be able to find great trades. Now, this is huge and, and you can't just do this blindly, but I just want to show you something. Do you see how? Watch this. The moving average is moving and the closes are happening above. So as long as you can find your resistance areas, as long as you can find areas of interest, you can follow this moving average pretty accurately when you're coming off of great areas of structure. 
What is a great area of structure? Somewhere where structure was once a support or a resistance and it turned into a different type of support or resistance. So for instance, right here, it was a resistance. It broke above and it became a support. So when it came back right here, the confirmation, that doesn't mean you take the trade here off of confirmation. It's just a confirmation, not entry. Jim, big Jim, confirmation here switched. Watch this. This is called a time confirmation. You're a high frequency trader. If you don't know how to reference time, you need to tune into my channel and stop waiting for the stochastic crossover and you on trading view and you got every other chart up in the world and every scanner up in the world and you still suck at trading, bro. It's because you don't even understand how to read the freaking scanner because the scanner is trying to read what you're trying to read and you're better than the scanner that you have. Don't get me started. This right here is called a time confirmation. Do you notice how this average didn't last long? So you already have a case. I have my structure area. I see that this is a great area to take the trade off of. How, look at this. I see that this is a great area to take my trade off of. I have the confirmation here. It breaks above my average. It comes above my average. doesn't come back here. And within this red candle, which is an average candle, that's what you're missing. The Hakanashi candles are an average candle. So it's almost like you're looking at price in an average, a moving average, but in, in a candle form. So it's easier for you to see when that average flips. A level line break is this candle here. Well, Ray, how is that a level line break? What the heck is a level line break? I'm going to show you. This average was going this way and it closed somewhere in this body. We can really go down to the lower time frame and see exactly where it closed and exactly what this shape looks like off of these two candles. So when we had this structure here, go test that same area, which is confirming our overall just thought process in our, in our case. And then it closes above. That's called a level line break. When that happens, I promise you, moves like this happen all the time. It happens here. It happens here. Guys, watch this. Watch this. It gets even better. Do you see how the signal came above the line? Do you see that? Now, if you think that process, you would think, well, hey, man, look, it fell below right here. Notice it closed below, which means it broke the moving average, which means your thought process needs to change. So it's not if you're just trading a strategy, you're just going to find, oh, look, level line break is going to go up. But then when this happens in the trade right here, you're confused. Well, if we know, OK, strong tendency like this, probably hit a zone. We can go back and find the area. We, we can go see why price did this. If, if you're in an area where that's not happening, right, then you obviously are in, in new territory. You just need to wait for new structure or understand your tendencies better. Here goes a tendency for the trending market. When markets trend like this, it has a tendency, a tendency to snap back harder. But when your EMA is broken or when you have a level line against the the trend that's happening, you need to wait for structure. In my in my uh, class that I have on my personal site, I say, hey, when you have price that hits a major zone, wait for structure. Just wait for it's going to happen. Why do I say that? You cannot get moves like this, right? Moves like this. Look at look how beautiful. Look how long it confirms under this 14 moving average. Now I know somebody gonna watch this and be like, "Oh, 14 moving average EMA. That's it. I got it." Man, let me help you out real quick. If you don't really study these markets, you're not going to catch those EMA trades as well as you think because you don't understand the tendency. The sauce is the freaking tendency. Notice this happens before this. Your market has to balance before it can be unbalanced. Ray, what do you mean? This is a balanced market inside of this yellow box. This is an unbalanced market outside of the box. Anytime you have a great move like this, you're going to have balance. You're going to have balance. Look at this. Look at this. That, that, that is a sideways market. And then look what you get. Smack. That's it. Right. Even if you're not looking at the whole overall market, I understand that this will make more sense if you were on a higher time frame coming down. But let's just say, OK, Ray, I want to be on the lower time frames and I want to catch the higher trades like this. No problem. No problem. What you want to do is you find those balance areas. And if you want to take trades, like, for instance, you want to take the trade off this EMA right here, trading an EMA in a price trap area is freaking scary. Why? Because the area where you're looking for a confirm is normally the area where a midline is. Ray, what is a midline? <laughs> Tune into my site and you'll know it's that simple. Right. So when you take trades, like when you take 
tendency trades, when you're taking a certain type of trade for a strategy, but you don't understand the tendency, sometimes the trades that you're taking, often most of the time, the trades that you take actually have nuances or rules that will go against you. So the odds are actually not in your favor because you're thinking of the wrong tendency. You're, you're, you're not trading the correct way for the type of market that you're in. So what trading comes down to is how well you can see, okay, this, this trend is over because of X, Y, and Z. This sideways market is over because of X, Y, and Z. A great way to think about it is this. If I have a price trap area, what do I want to see in this price trap area? I want to see price break out, and I either want to see it confirm and then give me an entry pattern going down, or I want to see it make structure below, and then I'll take that trade. So in, for, for instance, this did not come back and make an entry, but it gave me a confirm under the EMA. Now, you might think, well, I need the EMA to trade. No, you don't. This EMA helps. You know, If you want to take longer trades and you say, hey, look, I'm only going to take longer trades. If I go to the higher time frame and show you how beautiful beautiful this is with this close, right? Because that happens in here. So if you said I'm out, this is a 15 minute chart. I'm I know my 15 minute chart. I'm just looking for my candles to start being red. But then once I get these candles here, right? Once I get some sideways movement on my lower time frame, I really want to see if I can catch a breakout. So if it's moving sideways on my lower time frame, that means that it's probably a major zone that it has to touch before it makes a major decision. This is not a major zone. This is not a major zone. Your major zone is at the top here and here because it was, look at this, it was going down under the EMA and for some odd reason it wants to go and break the EMA. So because it touched this area and then it actually broke your EMA from trending under the EMA, do you see? Didn't break here. Touched the EMA but didn't break. So because it broke here, that lets you know this is an important zone. So if you see price Look, come back to the EMA, going sideways, whatever. That's happening on your lower time frame. You know the tendency for it to get back here is higher. I can take my trade in accordance with that. I have to think from a higher time frame to understand what's happening on my lower time frame. So when I see this right here building my case, this sideways market, I'm looking for an entry off of this, off of this sideways market. Now, you notice you won't get your entry until it breaks out here. So let's say you waited for this candle here. I'm going to get a, a, um, a vertical line and I'm going to go here and say, actually, I'm going to go here because this is when this one closed, this one opened. So when we go to the lower time frame, that will be the opening and we'll know what all this shape looks like. So that's the five minute. So when I go back to the one minute, it's going to be making structure right there. So we see that that's the start of this. We know, okay, price broke out. What are we looking for? We're either looking for price to come back and retest that area or we're looking for it to make structure and go down. And then look, just waiting, not entering. If you enter right here because you think it's going to go straight down, you enter too low, you take a two-minute trade, one minute trade, don't matter. You're probably getting spiked out the trade. Look at this. Comes back, makes structure, level line break here. You could take a five-minute, a 10-minute, a 15-minute. Look what happens. Because more people are interested because it confirmed after you had an overall collection or balanced market. That is by far the biggest gem you can get. So if you really think about it, well, Ray, if I if I just know how to find my balanced markets and I know that I'm waiting for a confirm off of a shape. So if I get a shape from a higher time frame, right? If I get my structure from my higher time frame like you just did, and I go to the lower time frame and I'm just confirming my shapes and my and my 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 patterns or my sideways markets, whatever you want to focus on, you're telling me all I have to do is wait for my idea to confirm before I take a trade. That's exactly what I'm telling you. You can sit up here and do these five second strategy crap all you want. You can you can do these put 500 trades in one minute trades in, in three minutes, whatever y'all got going on. And you're going to continue to not make money. And I'm going to continue to sit up here and kill these markets. All the money you putting into pocket options, I'm withdrawing it out. Yes, sir. I'm going to kill these markets. How? How? Because I understand that if I'm looking at an idea and let's say I see the sideways market and it comes back here and it doesn't confirm and it comes back into this area, my idea was wrong. I will continue to analyze the market until I see something that makes sense to me and I'll take that trade and I'll trust to take that trade. Another thing that you have to understand with this thought process that I'm trying to help you understand right now is that if you have things against you, like always losing an account, that affects how you enter the market, right? If like you have a psychological block against you because you've put yourself in a position to where you forced losing money, <coughs> which is not cool. You drink of water. 
So, what I want you to focus on on this video, because I understand that you probably have things that you like to do. And I understand that you have people that you like to learn from. And maybe you don't you don't like the sound of my voice. And it's like, this dude's too arrogant. Whatever it is, at least take the advice. And I hope that you made it to this point in the video, right? It's almost 30 minutes into the video. Most people won't make it past the first five minutes because it's, it's too much sauce for them. They want something quick and fast, and that's they just going to forever be bad at this. But if you've made it to this point in this video, and you're like, man, I really know I can do this, I would advise you to understand the higher time frame bias and how to think about it. Now, I'm going to tell you just the same way um, somebody who repairs your credit or somebody that does taxes. Of course, you have the right to do your own credit. You have the, you have the right to do your own taxes. But it comes down to two thoughts. Do you have the time to go through the the years that it would take for you to actually test out all these ideas on your own? Do you have the time to walk through that process of you really understanding how you trade and how you see the market? Or do you need to tap in with somebody for a certain amount of time, understand the thought process the way that they teach it, understand how they teach, but in the process of you practicing what they teach, you're kind of skipping those areas of just, oh, I don't know if I'm learning something that's right or wrong because this person has actually had success with what they're doing. So once you say, okay, I'm going to take what they're doing, I'm going to emulate off of them to learn what they're doing. I can also study how I like to see the market and what I like to do. And I can find something that works for me and I can scale it. Sometimes if the teacher is, is great enough or if your learning capacity is um, flexible enough, you can actually learn how to trade just like them and just take what they've taught and just accelerate past them because you didn't have to go through the years of learning all of the mess ups that they had to go through. You can skip that. That's the whole point of mentorship, right? So if we take this moving average off, understanding how moving average works when you're looking at this now, regular candles, this is all over the place. But when you're looking at these Hakanashis, you're just like, hey, man, I just need to wait for price to give me confirmations off of the collection areas. I just need to understand that if, an, if, if I'm looking at an average and I see that my average didn't break a certain high. So, for instance, it pushed down right here and then you see how it confirmed and pushed, then it couldn't break this high. So it made structure right here pushed. If I understand how to just see the market like that, the chances of me taking the right direction is higher. After that, I just need to have a good sentiment understanding of where my target zones are. So what do I normally like to look for when I'm looking for target zones, right? When I say target zones, I mean areas of interest where the opposite of what I'm trying to do would be interested. The only way you're going to know that if you're trading on a, a lower time frame right, is, is is if you have your lines from a higher time frame. What do I mean? If I wanted to take trades on my 15-minute chart, I probably need to be looking at my four-hour chart to get my lines so I can understand what's going on. And then I can work my way from four-hour to 15-minute or at least an hour, right? If I'm looking at my hour chart, I need to be able to get those lines from my hour chart so when I go down to that 15-minute chart, I can find my entries and I can think through the noise, right? The, the collection areas to say, hey, the probability of this collection area going down is higher than going up because of X, Y, and Z. If I enter a trade and I don't have a case like that, hey, I'm entering this trade because of X, Y, and Z. I'm entering this trade because a high wasn't made. I went to the lower time frame. It's giving me a continuation pattern for a sale. And on my higher time frame, you know, it don't even have to be the 15 minute. On my five minute time frame, between my highest time frame and the lowest time frame that I want to trade on, I have a confirmation close for sellers. I'm going to go ahead and enter this trade for 15 minutes because I believe I'm in an area where the seller is going to be interested to go ahead and push the market away from my entry. Sometimes it'll be super close trades. Sometimes you'll lose trades. Most of the time, you're probably going to smack those trades. I promise you. You put a little risk management with that and you're going to find yourself pulling profits out the market. Simple as that. Now, what can you do? Hey, Ray, I watched through this whole video. I bumped into your channel. Maybe I've been watching your channel for a little bit, but I wasn't sure if I was just ready to do this. I'm watching all these other channels and stuff, and I don't even know if you can pull money off pocket options or whatever. If you're still going through that point, this channel ain't for you, man. I've pulled, I've pulled money live off pocket options. I have videos showing withdrawal process, showing my Coinbase account. I literally just showed you my bank account. Like I'm really trying to let you know that this is what I do. 
And I say that for a reason, right? Building our own NFTs, you know, spent over $30,000 to get my own site made, um, to, to pay for my servers, just to do, do all of these things to put people in a better position to understand this because this is powerful and the things that you can do in business is just phenomenal when you master something like this. The way that you even look at your stock market trades, the way that you buy stocks, like the way that you understand value is going to be different because you can read a financial asset, Right? Come on, like I'm on fire. This makes me feel great. I'm glad that I'm putting this information on YouTube. Um, but if you want to tap in, you can literally do this right here. You can go to raybands.com, www.raybands.com, and you can actually come get some of this sauce, man. I have monthly, you can do the annual. I have perks for doing annual or semi annual questions. I have an NFT that's coming out soon that's going to give you access to behind closed door meetings, discounts on like taxes and uh, uh, credit restoration and, and other things to build wealth. I'm actually putting together a year play, right? I'm putting together something saying, hey, if you start with me in a year from now, you'll be able to touch some funds and it doesn't just have to be from your trading account. Right. I'm going to set up that I, I'm getting ready to start after the new year. I'm getting ready to start doing one on one calls with all my members just to see what they're trying to do with their trading and push them in the right direction. And if I talk to somebody and it sounds like they shouldn't be trading right now, I'll tell them straight up like you shouldn't be trading right now. You need to be building your budget like this is about creating wealth. This isn't about trying to get fast wins. So when you get on here, we have a community page. We have a catalog page. Right. I would log into the community, but, you know. My members will be like, why are you letting people up in here, man? They need to put their money where their mouth is. So I'm not going to do that, but I will show you the catalog, right? You get on here and I, the getting started right here, understanding the market. I break it down for you. High frequency, how you can take this thought process into traditional Forex. And then look, I have all my live streams in a vault, right? This site has only been up not even a week yet. And we already moving and shaking and just destroying the markets. And hopefully we'll see you guys there to tap into. But with that information, I will catch you on the next YouTube video. Peace. Hoo-yah!